Good evening. I'd like to call to order the third regular meeting of the 2019-2020 Common Council. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The grass is greener where you water it. So appropriate for this season. Uh, next item is uh, roll call. Clerk there are called. eight present. Alder uh, person Mitchell and Phillips are both excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge, Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll go on to approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is a presentation of our first quarter of 2019 strategic action plan items and critical measurements uh, by City Administrator Daryl Hoffland. Uh, thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, again, I appreciate uh, the work that's been done uh, in help in putting this together uh, for for your uh, information uh, this evening. Uh, city department heads, as well as Carrie Aaron's uh, assistant to the city administrator, uh, uh, did most of the work. So thank thanks again for for all your hard work. Uh, as as in the past, a quarterly update is provided to you. Uh, it consists of action items as well as benchmark measurements. Uh, the six focus areas for the 2017-2021 st strategic plan include quality of life, infrastructure and public facilities, economic development, neighborhood revitalization, governing and fiscal management, and communication. And again, I will attempt to hit the, the high notes. Uh, again, some of the projects are multi-year in nature. Uh, as you can see, there is notation where, in fact, projects, specifically action items, uh, are postponed until 2020. Uh, again, a lot of the work uh, would not happen without uh, collaboration uh, between departments as well as with community partners. Uh, when possible, the city staff attempts to leverage uh, intergovernmental resources, including uh, financial uh, contribution, uh, as a way to uh, stretch the local property taxes as much as possible. We do appreciate public feedback uh, as we make improvements, uh, as well as welcome suggestions for modifications. Uh, the city's begun an effort uh, to uh, provide comparative benchmarking with other municipalities to verify that our efforts remain fiscally responsible. Again, th uh, that is through um, a website. Uh, you can find that under the city administrators uh, section of the website where we have comparisons between uh, like size uh, communities. First action item is quality of life. Uh, fire response of 38 seconds or less. Uh, we're at 91% of our goal. Uh, this compares favorably to uh, the level, again, same first quarter, uh, 2018, of 89%. Residents who feel safe or very safe walking after dark, we are at 86% of our goal. Uh, our benchmark is 80%. Uh, the response on the last survey indicated 68%. Uh, responded that they do feel safe, very safe, so we're at 86% of our benchmark. Uh, regarding part one type crime, uh, which are violent crimes, uh, we are through the first quarter at 29%, with an assumption that 100% is for the total year. The 0.77 is the same, exactly the same as we were in 2018. Regarding pr part one crime rate for property crimes, the 3.10 per 1,000 population uh, is actually lower uh, as similar quarter 2018 where that uh, amount was 3.26. 215 pounds of prescription drugs were collected. Again, this is through the first quarter. As you're aware, uh, just a couple weeks back, uh, there was a major collection, uh, I think take back drug uh, day. Uh, so th that information will be part of the presentation uh, that will provide as part of the second quarter update. We have nine neighborhood associations uh, as part of the neighborhood uh, leadership cabinet. Uh, this is in line with the benchmark goals. 
100 literacy or citizenship public events have been held uh, to date. Uh, for Shoreline Metro, fixed routes, 18.6 uh, trips per revenue miles. Uh, 15 is our goal, so you can see we exceed that 120%. For all of 2018, that amount was 15.38. So again, we're exceeding uh, substantially uh, the amount uh, compared to a year, even a year ago. Uh, in the last uh, couple weeks, uh, celebrated Tree City USA, uh, and Arbor Day was held recently. Uh, as you're aware, the city is 41 consecutive years of receiving this uh, recognition. Uh, that is the best in the state of Wisconsin. Under infrastructure and public facilities, uh, again, through the first quarter, we received three fixed route buses. Um, subsequent to that, we've uh, received two additional, so uh, we have received all of our buses in 2019, five, five planned, five <coughs> delivered year to date. Uh, managed City Hall renovation project, uh, last report from uh, Public Works Director David Beeble, 80% uh, uh, fairly close to the finish line. Uh, please report that we are on budget. And again, a planned move-in date is uh, mid-June. Mid Develop citywide long-term stormwater management program. Uh, uh, we're working with a consultant. Uh, we're 40% through, uh, so a full uh, report will be discussed uh, later this year with a recommendation possibly for the 2020 budget. Continue implementation of the Sheboygan A's complex improvements. Uh, you can see we're close again to the finish line on this. We're at 98%. Uh, our work has been more directly associated with the lights, but also coordinating with them on the new party deck as they uh, plan their opening game uh, soon. Economic development. Continue to visit with visit Sheboygan for recreational city green programming. Uh, transform former capsule property into innovation district. 15% uh, as you as you know the city's done a lot of planning. We've also uh, worked with property owners as far as acquisition. Um, we're currently in discussions with the developer on a multi-story uh, building, and uh, as you also know, we're in the planning process for constructing an on-grade uh, parking lot to support that development <coughs> and other developments in the area. A developed master plan for Mayline, a West Sheboygan River District, again working with GRAFE uh, on the, that plan. Um, more to come in, in the next several months. Uh, the next is room tax, and again, I'm gonna be providing you with final numbers for 2018 due to the reporting and our receipt timetable. Uh, typically, uh, the city receives money roughly two months after the close of a quarter, so it's easier for me to provide you with information for totals for, uh, for a calendar year. In 2018, uh, 738,000 and change, or 134% above the benchmark goal. This compares favorably to the 2017, where a total of 585,975 was received. Both of these totals exclude uh, room tax from Blue Harbor. As, as you know, uh, the debt was paid off on the Blue Harbor Conference Center uh, in 2018, so the 2019 information that you will receive soon will include room tax uh, generated from Blue Harbor. So look, look for that in a future report. Next focus area is neighborhood revitalization. Again, continuing to work on baseline data and target neighborhoods. Um, again, through uh, better mapping uh, and tracking, uh, we're becoming more sort of efficient in, in staff's work. Uh, we're 50% through the target areas for 2019. And I, my recollection is that we are taking on additional neighborhoods uh, in 2019 compared to uh, the same a year ago at this time, uh, we were not able to select and work through as many neighborhoods. Uh, next is maintain neighborhood beat officer positions. Uh, we're funding, funded at two uh, beat officers. That's a 75-25 federal government grant, uh, and that grant uh, is good for three years, 2019 to through, through 2021. So that money has been secured. Organizing annual spring cleanup event in partnership with the Public Works. Uh, some of you, uh, if you're part of a neighborhood that belongs to an association, you've had this 
uh, door hanger. Um, typically identifies upcoming meetings as well as a large item disposal program. So again, if you did not receive one of these, most likely you do not live in a neighborhood uh, that has an association. This is one of the benefits or incentives to working with your neighbors to become part of an association. The, the uh, large item disposal program uh, has, uh, I think we're two weeks in, and we'll continue through the first weekend in June. Abandoned vehicles uh, that are towed, uh, uh, I don't know if this is good or bad, uh, but we are below, uh, same quarter last year, 34 year to date, again through the first quarter. Uh, same time as last year, uh, 51 vehicles had been towed. Uh, garbage complaints, again, first quarter 2019, 98 complaints, investigated, cited, a year ago, 264. So again, hopefully uh, our neighborhood, neighbors are respecting their neighborhood and keeping uh, those complaints to a minimum. Next focus area is governing and fiscal management. Uh, uh, develop a succession plan for all management positions that has been completed. Uh, continue providing detailed budget documents to residents and submit to the Government Finance Offices Association for review. Uh, this document, in fact, was uh, submitted to GFOA uh, at the end of January. Uh, typically, we receive results in August or September. Uh, Munis, which is our uh, major software for accounting, for payroll, uh, the salary and budget module, we're near completion as far as implementing that. Uh, clearly, uh, timing-wise, we're gearing up for the development of the 2020 budget, and this module will um, allow staff to be more efficient and more accurate uh, in developing numbers. Communication is the uh, last, uh, sixth and last uh, focus area. Uh, continued steady increase in users of all city social media outlets. Uh, we're 100% over on all of our categories, similar to 2018. Uh, as you recall, in 2018, we actually uh, sent out two community surveys, one I think in February and one uh, end of November, uh, along with ARPS uh, support. Um, 1,277 responses were received. Uh, that compares with the earlier survey in 2018, which was 1,187. So our, at a benchmark of 1,100, we're 16% above that. Last uh, benchmark I, I'm reporting for you is six fire department community <coughs> events have been held this year. Uh, that compares to one uh, a year ago at this time. Uh, any, any questions or comments? Alderperson Boren. Uh, Daryl, with the uh, Munis, uh, with the Munis implementation, uh, is that a combination uh, of training and/or uh, the actual uh, software or hardware? Uh, you know, why are we've had that for a number of years, right? The Munis software. Uh, there's multiple modules that the city has. Uh, I think this one, in fact, I think we had it, but uh, never implemented it. Um, Again, with uh, some of the challenges we had in developing prior year budgets, uh, we felt that there had to be an easier way, especially since uh, we use Munis for our payroll system. So instead of having a separate or replicated spreadsheet through Excel, as an example, the thought is let's go ahead and use the payroll information that we have and just sort of translate that in into a budget document. Uh, it uh, required us to change uh, how we sort of operated. Uh, it changed as far as making sure that we had up-to-date uh, personnel information uh, inputted into the software. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think there's, at any one time, there's probably been seven or eight staff that's been involved in training or mm -hmm. assisting others and better understanding uh, the need uh, and as far as improving the input of information uh, and again, re ultimately discussing uh, what the outcome or output will be down the road and how it will benefit uh, really all departments in addition to HR. Is that uh, recent seminar that the employees uh, attended down in Texas, is that gonna help to expedite this process? 
Uh, yes. Uh, there was additional training uh, held in, in Dallas. Uh, in addition, uh, staff that did uh, attend that conference were able to uh, receive updates regarding some of the other modules that they're responsible for. Uh, and as in at many conferences, as you know, it's a lot about networking, especially talking with fellow uh, Munis users in Wisconsin, uh, knowing that our accounting system, some of the, our payroll costs and structures are very similar. Uh, so developing that, those relationships uh, were, were very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that presentation. Next, we'll have another presentation of the 2017 GFOA Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for the City of Sheboygan by Finance Director Marty Halverson. Good evening. So uh, tonight I'm pleased to present to Mayor Vandersteen and the City of Sheboygan an award from the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada, commonly referred to as GFOA. Uh, this award is a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Uh, the document that was submitted for consideration is the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, also known as the CAFR. Uh, this award reflects the commitment of the Common Council and staff to meeting the highest principles of government financial reporting. In order to receive the award, the City had to satisfy nationally recognized guidelines for effective financial reporting and presentation. The document and this award reinforces the City's strategic plans focus areas, governing and fiscal management and communication. The city's goal is to provide open and transparent financial documents that empower its residents, staff, and officials to make informed decisions regarding the future needs of Sheboygan. This is the fifth year GFOA has bestowed the city with this recognition, and Sheboygan is one of 32 municipalities in Wisconsin to have received this award. I'd especially like to thank the finance department staff for their hard work and dedication along with the city's department heads and city administrator, Daryl Hoffland, for their collaboration with the finance team in achieving this award. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor Vanderson. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Finance Director Halverson for all the great work that he's done and also Administrator Hoffland for the leadership he's provided in uh, ha making this happen. Next item on the agenda is public forum. Do we have anyone this evening? No one this evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask, um, Patrick Boyle from the Sheboygan County Food Bank to please step to the podium. We have a proclamation for Letter Carriers Food Drive Day. This proclamation, whereas every year on the second Saturday in May, letter carriers across the country collect non-perishable foods as part of the nation's largest one-day food drive, distributing the donations to local food banks. And whereas the letter carriers stamp out hunger food drive is just one example of how letter carriers work to make a difference in the lives of those that they serve. Since the pilot drive was held in 1991, more than uh, 1.67 billion pounds of food have been collected. And whereas we recognize all letter carriers for their hard work, their commitment to their communities, all of the food collected for our community stays in our community, and we support the letter carrier's efforts to help those in needy in our community. Whereas we also recognize the noteworthy milestone of 27 years that the National Letter Carriers Food Drive celebrates in 2019. Now, therefore, I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim Saturday, May 11th of 2019 as Letter Carriers Food Drive Day in the City of Sheboygan. We encourage the residents of our community to support the food drive by placing non-perishable food items in or near your mailbox on food drive day. Your letter carrier will pick up uh, while delivering the mail and all together we can help to feed our hungry. So I'm pleased to present this to Patrick Boyle and recognize all the work that the food bank does in this effort.
Thank you, Mayor uh, Vandersteen and the Common Council for your interest today and willingness to help our neighbors by reading this proclamation tonight in support of the letter carriers stamp out hunger food drive. Uh, like many places in the world and the United States, I'm here to tell you that hunger is a real problem in Sheboygan, and it runs probably deeper than you think. It's estimated that about 10 to 11 percent of Sheboygan residents struggle with food insecurity and hunger. People suffering from hunger are elderly, the elderly who are not able to work any longer. Many live on, living on very fixed incomes. People struggling with mental illness. People who have lost a job or struggle to remain employed. Veterans, college students, people with big medical bills, and the list continues. You just never know what people are challenged with. The food bank acts as a safety net for people in need to help them, and our job is to, to really elevate them and get them back on their feet and treat them with the utmost, utmost love, respect, and dignity that they deserve. The food bank has been around for 37 years, but up until a few years ago, we were Sheboygan County's uh, biggest secret, I think. But thanks to our generous donors, we now occupy a wonderful 10,000 square foot uh, facility on the north side of Sheboygan. This is the old Nemshoff factory, if you're familiar with the area. We serve about 3,000 families per month through our emergency food network, and we distribute 71,000 pounds of food per month to 15 food pantries, community meal sites, and shelters. It takes a team and extensive collaboration and coordination to run a successful food bank and to fight hunger every day here in Sheboygan. Speaking of fighting hunger, besides supporting the food bank with financial support, as the mayor just read, if you'd like to uh, help, we have our largest single day food drive coming up. It's called Stamp Out Hunger on May 11th. You'll notice yellow bags on your mailbox this week. Uh, they're going out this week. You probably haven't seen them yet. Probably about Wednesday this week you'll see them. So if you fill that bag with non-perishable food items, place it in the bag by that following Saturday morning, the May, May 11th coming up, um, the postal carriers will pick it up, take it back to the food bank, and we really appreciate it. Um, and I, I just wanted to reiterate our appreciation to the post office for their hard work and efforts in fighting hunger. They really, really do a great job, and we're really appreciative of it. So thanks again to the mayor, city administrator, common council, and everybody in Sheboygan for helping to support the food bank. Thank you. Lens cap was on. Thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Keep that? Yep. Oh, thanks. It's all yours. Thank you. Yep. Next, I'd like to call up our city clerk, Meredith De Bruin. A proclamation, whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk is a time-honored and vital part of our local government and exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk is one of the oldest among public servants, you can see she's rather young though, uh, whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens and local government bodies and agencies of government at other levels, and whereas municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and partiality in rendering equal service to all, and whereas the municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community, and whereas municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of Office of Municipal Clerk clerk through the participation in educational programs, seminars, workshops, and annual meetings of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations. And whereas it is the most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of Municipal Clerk, and whereas Municipal Clerks Week is celebrating the 50th anniversary of this uh, recognition in 2019, now, I therefore, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim the week of May 5th through the 11th of 2019 as Municipal Clerks Week in Sheboygan. And further extend an appreciation to our city clerk, Meredith De Bruin, her team, including Melissa Clevenger, Cheryl Smith, and Julie Wyke, and to all municipal clerks for the vital services that they perform and the exemplary dedication to the communities that they represent. Please present this to Meredith De Bruin.
And next I'd like to bring up uh, Department of Public Works Director David Beeble. This proclamation, whereas the public works services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support and understanding of informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of the public works systems, and programs such as water, sewer, uh, streets, highways, public buildings, solid waste collection, and whereas the health and safety and comfort of this community is greatly dependent on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities as well as their planning, design, and construction are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skills of public works officials, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel and staff who and public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work that they perform. Now, therefore, I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim the week of May 19th through the 25th is National Public Works Week in the City of Sheboygan, and I call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to the health, safety, and comfort and quality of life in Sheboygan. David, I'm proud to present this to you and your staff, and uh, I think you have a few words about a special event for us. Sure. So please I go ahead. Thanks, Mayor. Um, as in celebration of National Public Works Week, we're going to host uh, our DPW Open House Saturday, May 18th from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m., at the Municipal Service Building, as well as our wastewater treatment plant. So it's an open house opportunity for the public to come down, get a little behind the scenes tour and get an up close and personal uh, view of some of the work we do in the equipment and, and meet some of our staff. Tonight we just have some of the staff, some of the team members, Ryan Sazma, our city engineer, Jason Blasiola, our street superintendent and sanitation, as well as Rick Nye, manager and supervisor of our fleet and maintenance, uh, of equipment maintenance. So uh, we really encourage the public to come out, learn a little bit more, uh, and as well, it was quite, pretty, kind of a nice uh, segue, we are also holding a food drive. So we're encouraging citizens to drop off food, non-perishable food items that will be donated to the food bank. So if and for some odd reason you missed your postal service pickup, you can bring it down the next week to the service building. We'll be happy to collect it and donate it as well to the food bank. So thank you very much. Uh, just a couple other announcements. We had a great uh, uh, beach and street cleanup day uh, on Saturday. Thanks to all the residents that participated in this cleanup. They really helped to make a difference on Sheboygan's Lakeshore by participating. Um, we had four sites, uh, General King Beach, Deland Park Beach, North Point Park, and Broughton Drive. And we uh, thanks go to the Adopt a Beach program, which is supported by the Lakeshore Natural Resources Partnership, the Sheboygan River Basin Partnership, the Friends of Peace Park, the Friends of North Point, the King Park Association, the Memorial Neighborhood Association, and thanks to the Adopt a Street program and the work of the Sheboygan Rotary Club. Next is... Um, the Peace Park Committee uh, is having a plant sale. Uh, they're trying to make way for our new sister city gardens at Peace Park, so they'll be planting some, uh, some new garden beds with uh, things that reflect uh, items that come, flowers that come from Germany and around Esslingen, as well as uh, Japan for Subami. And uh, these items uh, that were planted there before will be moved, and they'll be part of their plant sale. And that'll be taking place on May 10th and 11th from 9 to 4 at 2829 Erie Avenue. And uh, most plants will be about $5. And then this um, coming Friday, we're having a Bike with Mike program. I'm hoping that residents will come out and uh, get on their bikes and get started riding this season. Um, we've got a program that we put together with the um, 
uh, National Bike Challenge. Uh, if you go to a site called uh, lovetoride.net, you can sign up to be a member of the Sheboygan team and download the Ride Report app on your phone and it'll track all your mileage and, and we'll collect that information for all the people that are participating. The ride is going to start at 5.30 at the Veterans Memorial near the Water Tower and it'll proceed east along Erie Avenue and um, then we'll be going north on the Shoreland 400 Trail and it'll end at Three Sheep's tap room. And uh, while the remodeling for City Hall is on schedule, we didn't allow enough time for the installation, fine tuning and training on some of the new technology in the City Council chambers. So we're going to move our City Hall move-in date back to the first Council meeting in July. So now we're looking at 56 days until be able to move back into City Hall for our Council meeting. Thank you. Ooh. Ooh. Grumble. Made it this far. <laughs> okay, next item is the consent agenda. Uh, it's a motion to accept, uh, rather, uh, that'll include items 2.3 through, through 2.11. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. <clears throat> is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, item 3.1 is RO number 5 of 1920 by Director of Planning and Development submitting a report from Chad Pelichek noting acceptance of an additional $20,000 in sponsorship contribution towards the 2019 City's Freedom Fest celebration from Planco. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to, to say thanks to the uh, Planco company for stepping up and sponsoring the full event of the 2019 uh, City Freedom Fest uh, celebration. It, it's, it's a big deal um, with economic times, with uh, all the tariffs going on, that uh, Plenco was able to uh, step up and, and donate the other $20,000. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Items 3.2 through 3.8 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 4.1 and 4.2 will lay over. Items uh, 4.3 through 4.10 will be referred to various committees. And under reports of committees, Item 5.1 is RC number 274 of 1819 by licensing hearings and public safety committee. Tuma's referred resolution number 183 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Donahue dissolving the sustainable Sheboygan task force and recommends approving the substitute resolution. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move to hold the document. Is there second. a second? Thank you very much. The uh, item is being held. Uh, our uh, sustainability coordinator, Chad Pelichek, is uh, still looking for a suitable replacement uh, to a citizen committee, and he hopes to have a report by our next meeting. So thank you very much. Uh, all those in, in uh, is there any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 4 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Tuma's referred direct referral resolution number 4 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne authorizing city officials to negotiate and enter into a development agreement between Van Horn Development LLC and the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Sheboygan RDA and the City of Sheboygan with regard to the former Kingsbury property located in approximately 2.49 acres south of Wisconsin Avenue and west of, of North 10th Street and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'm to accept the document. Second. 
Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? City Attorney, are we all good with the language? Yes. Okay. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight ayes. Motion passes. Under uh, general ordinances, uh, items 6.1 through 6.3 will be referred to various committees. And under other matters authorized by law, assist, uh, City Attorney uh, Charles Adams. 7.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2019. June 30, 2020, and June 30, 2021. That'll be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We'll stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight.